In this question, we want to find fixed end moments using column analogy method. We are given a beam with ends A and B fixed and the second moment of area for first half of the beam is equals to 2i and that for second half of the beam is i. E for the beam is constant and there is a concentrated load W acting at the mid span of the beam. To solve this using column analogy method, the first step is to draw corresponding statically determinate beam and that in this case will be a simply supported beam that I can get by replacing fixed ends at A and B by pin supports. So my corresponding statically determinate beam will be. Now because this is statically determinate, we can find bending moment diagram using just equations of equilibrium. I will not do the full calculation here and I will just draw the final bending moment diagram. The bending moment diagram in this case will be a triangle with maximum value at the point of application of load and this maximum value will be WL by 4. So this is my bending moment diagram. The next step will be to draw analogous column. Analogous column will be a short column with width equals to length of the beam that is equals to L and breadth equals to 1 upon EI. Now we are note that for first half of the beam the second moment of area is 2I. So breadth of the analogous column for first half of the width will be 1 upon 2 EI and because for the second half of the beam the second moment of area is I. So breadth of the analogous column for second half of the width will be 1 upon EI. So my analogous column will be and note this is my cross section or top view and the side view will be on top of this analogous column I will apply mx divided by EI loading and because for first half the second moment of area is 2 EI. So my bending moment diagram will be divided by 2 EI. So the loading will be with this height equals to WL by 8 EI because M at that point is WL by 4 and that is divided by 2 EI and for the next half it will be this triangular load with maximum value equals to WL by 4 EI and now we can find the pressure at the base of this column by using P equals to F by A plus minus M dash divided by I dash into X here F is the resultant of the distributed load on top of analogous column A is area of cross section of analogous column M dash is the moment because of distributed load on top of analogous column about centroidal axis and I dash is second moment of area of cross section of analogous column about centroidal axis and X is distance of any point on cross section of the column from centroidal axis. So first I will find the force F. F will be area of the total distributed load. So area for first half of the triangle that is this triangle will be half base is L by 2 into height WL by 8 EI plus area for second half of the triangle will be half base into height WL by 4 EI. This will simplify to give me WL square divided by 32 EI plus WL squared by 16 EI that will be equals to 3 WL squared by 32 
EI. Next, area of cross section for analogous column will be L by 2 into 1 upon 2 EI plus L by 2 into 1 upon EI and that will be equals to 3 L by 4 EI. Next, I will find I dash. Now, because my cross section consists of two rectangles, I will have to find location of centroid of overall cross section. So, I will take this as a reference line for measuring location of centroid. The centroid of first rectangle will be middle of this rectangle and centroid of second rectangle will be middle of that rectangle. So, this distance will be L by 4 and this distance will be 3 L by 4. So, the centroid of entire cross section I can write as sigma xi ai divided by sigma ai that will be equals to L by 4 into L by 4 ei plus 3 L by 4 into L by 2 ei divided by sigma ai that is total area of the cross section that is 3 L by 4 ei. This will simplify to give me L squared by 16 ei plus 3 L squared divided by 8 ei whole divided by 3 L by 4 ei. This will give me 7 L squared by 16 ei divided by 3 L by 4 ei. This I can simplify. 4 ei will cancel 16 ei 4 times. This L will cancel L. So I get equals to 7 L by 4 into 1 by 3 that is 7 L by 12. So the centroid of analogous column cross section will be at a distance of 7 L by 12 from this end. Now we have to find the I dash and M dash about this axis for the analogous column. So first I will find I dash. So for I dash I will divide this whole cross section into two parts this one and this one. So for first part this will be the centroidal axis. For the second part this will be the centroidal axis. So I will use parallel axis theorem. So I dash will be the second moment of area of first part about its centroidal axis will be width into depth cube by 12. So that is 1 upon 2 EI into L by 2 cube divided by 12 plus area into the perpendicular distance between the two axes that is this distance squared that will be 7 L by 12 minus L by 4 squared plus the moment of inertia of second half about its centroidal axis that will be width into depth cube by 12. So that will be 1 upon EI into L by 2 cube divided by 12 plus its area that is L by 2 EI into the perpendicular distance between the two axes that is this distance that will be 3 L by 4 minus 7 L by 12 whole squared. This I can simplify to get L cubed divided by 16 into 12 EI plus L by 4 EI into L by 12 squared plus L cubed divided by 8 into 12 EI plus L by 2 EI into 2 L by 12 squared here is 2 will cancel this 12 I left with 6 so this further simplifies to give me 11 L cube divided by 1 92 EI. Next, I will find M dash. 
so that will be about the centroidal axis for that i will divide the distributed load in two parts first one for this triangular load and second for this triangular load the resultant force because of first triangular load will be half into base into height into its point of application will be at a distance two third the base length from acute angle corner so that will be this distance and that is two third into l by two that is equals to l by three so the lever arm will be this distance that is 7 l by 12 minus l by 3 and because this moment will be in anti-clockwise sense so i'll put a minus sign in front of that plus the resultant force because of this blue shaded triangle will be half into base into height resultant of this force will act at a distance two-third the base length from the acute angle corner and that again will be l by 3 and note that this distance will be 5 l by 12 because this distance is 7 l by 12 and total width is l so the lever arm for the second triangular load will be this distance and that will be 5 l by 12 minus l by 3 and because moment because of this force will be clockwise so there will be a positive sign and this i can simplify so minus w l squared divided by 32 ei here i can take 12 lcm so i get 7 l minus 4 l plus w l square divided by 16 ei here also i can take 12 lcm so in the numerator i will get 5 l minus 4 l so this will be equals to minus w l square divided by 32 ei into 3 l divided by 12 plus w l square by 16 ei into l divided by 12 here we can take lcm that will be 32 ei into 12 so in the numerator i will be left with minus 3 w l cube plus 2 w l cube that will be equals to minus w l cube divided by 384 ei and note that this is in clockwise sense force f will be acting at the centroid and because our moment w l q upon 384 ei with negative sign in clockwise sense so i can change the sign i can make it positive and apply in anti-clockwise sense so our moment will be w l cube divided by 384 ei in anti-clockwise sense and this is edge a this is edge b so x a will be distance of edge a from centroidal axis that is this distance this is x a and x b will be distance of edge b from centroidal axis so this will be x b and that is equals to 5 l by 12 so now i can write my pressures at both the edges p a will be because the net moment about centroidal axis is anti-clockwise so i'll have a positive sign for pa so that will be f by a plus m dash upon i dash into x a so that will be equals to f is 3 w l square by 32 ei divided by area is 3 l divided by 4 ei plus m dash is w l cube divided by 384 ei divided by i dash is 11 l cube divided by 192 ei and x a is 7 l by 12 
now here you can cancel this 4 ei with this 32 ei to get 8 l with this l square to get l is 3 with this 3 192 ei will cancel 384 ei to give me 2 this l cube will cancel this l cube so i'm left with w l by 8 plus w by 2 into 1 by 11 into 7 l by 12 here i can take w l by 8 common from this to get 1 plus 7 by 33 that is equals to w l by 8 33 lcm 33 plus 7 that will be equals to w l by 8 into 40 by 33 here this 8 will cancel this 40 5 times that will be equals to 5 w l divided by 33 this will be equals to m a b and p b i can write as f by a and now minus m dash by i dash into x b so that will be equals to f is 3 w l square divided by 32 e i divided by 3 l upon 4 e i minus w l cube divided by 384 e i divided by 11 l cube upon 192 e i into 5 l by 12 so here 4 e i will cancel 32 e i 8 times this l will cancel l squared to give me l this 3 will cancel this 3 192 e i will cancel 384 e i 2 times this l cube will cancel this l cube so i am left with equals to w l by 8 minus w by 2 into 1 by 11 into 5 l by 12 here i can take w l by 8 common so i am left with 1 minus 5 divided by 33 will be equals to w l by 8 i can take 33 lcm so i am left with 33 minus 5 in numerator that is equals to w l by 8 into 28 upon 33 here i can cancel this 4 2s are 8 4 7s are 28 so i am left with 7 w l divided by 66 this is my m b a